In this video, you're going to learn how to categorize your income and expenses. So here we are in the bank review window. And before we start categorizing, you should know that QuickBooks Online is actually going to try to help you categorize. So QuickBooks Online is a pretty smart program. So what it's gonna do is it's going to try to help you name the payee and categorize your transactions. It will get smarter the longer you use it. So in the beginning, it's not very good at guessing payee names or categorizations. So don't assume that because QuickBooks has added in a category that it's necessarily correct. It's up to you to review and change the categories and to check QuickBooks' work. As time goes on, QuickBooks will start to learn your patterns with your spending and your vendors and your payees. And that's when the magic really happens and the system will start to do a lot of the work for you. But you do have to get through the first month or so doing a lot more manual work than you eventually will need to do. Here we are with a bunch of transactions that need to be categorized. And you'll notice a few things. First, you'll notice that QuickBooks has downloaded the date, description, and the amount that, of the transaction. That is all data that comes in from your bank. QuickBooks has also tried to give your transactions categories. And to be honest, it hasn't really done a very good job of this. So let's go through how you will categorize transactions. First, we have acuity scheduling. So what we'll do first is, is in order to open up the transaction, we're simply gonna click anywhere where it's gray. This will now open up the window where you can enter in your payee name and adjust your category. Now, as we've mentioned before, we notice now that acuity scheduling is just the description from the bank. It's not actually added in as a payee. So in order to add in your payee, you're going to click here and you're gonna start typing in the name of whoever you paid or whoever paid you. Now we see here that acuity is not yet in my system. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to add acuity and QuickBooks makes this really easy by creating this drop-down box. So I press here and now QuickBooks wants to know what's the name of the payee and is the payee a vendor or a customer? Usually if it's an expense, it's going to be a vendor and if it's a deposit, it's going to be a customer. So after we type in our name, we choose our type, we're just gonna press save. And now QuickBooks knows that the payee is acuity. The next step is we're gonna come over here to this drop-down box and we're going to select the category. There are two ways that you can select a category. The first is you can simply start typing in a category name. So let's do office expenses. If you don't wanna type in a category name or if you're not quite familiar with your categories yet, you can use the drop-down and then you can scroll through to find the expense category or income category that pertains to the expense. The last step is to press add. So once you like everything here, and you can also add a memo, so we could say scheduling software if you want, or you can not add a memo. It's really up to you and the data that you wanna capture. But once we have finished this process, the last step is to simply come over here and press add. Now I'm gonna scroll down because I wanna show you what happens after we've added a transaction. We see here that QuickBooks now remembers that if it says acuity scheduling, the payee is acuity and the category or match is green. Now notice how these are black and these are green. When it's black, it means that QuickBooks is simply making a guess. When it's green, it means that QuickBooks is remembering something that happened in the past and is using that data to set the category or match. So generally green means that you just have to give it a quick review. And if the category or match is correct, instead of going through the whole process of opening up the transaction and entering information in, you can simply press add. And there should be one more acuity, here we go. So we have one more acuity here in the bank review window and we're just going to press add. Now let's talk about how to categorize income. The process is pretty much the same. Anytime you receive money, which will be under the receive column, you're just gonna go in and just like you did with your expenses, you're gonna click and you're gonna select the payee. Now in this case, your payee is going to be whoever paid you. So it's not who you paid, it's not a vendor, it's now a customer. So we're just gonna call this payee Ponytown. Enter and it's a customer, so we'll say save. So QuickBooks is smart enough to recognize that if you are putting in payee information for spent, it'll automatically default to vendor. And if you're putting in payee information for received, it'll automatically default to customer. 
Now the last step is simply to use the drop down menu or type in the income category that is attached to the income. So let's say it is simply my awesome course number two. And if I wanted to add in any sort of information in the memo, I could add in the information. And then the last step is to press add. Now you will see here that again, QuickBooks Online is going to try to remember the payee and category or match for future income that match this. This is one of those cases where it's actually not particularly helpful because often you will have a description that says something like mobile deposit and not every mobile deposit is going to be from the same customer. So with deposits and money received, it's especially important to pay attention to who the payee is and the category match because often what QuickBooks Online is gonna automatically default into is not necessarily going to be correct. Now the last step is I wanna show you that these items are actually now in the register. So we're gonna to go to go to register and now we see a couple things. We see Ponytown, $100 deposit is here. And if we come over here and go into our credit card account, we'll see that all those acuity transactions that we had scheduled are now in the account. And that's how you enter in your income and expenses in QuickBooks Online.